So I conceived of the Moppet study because I wanted to learn more about very young children with Fabry disease. Because most of the data we have in children with Fabry disease is people trying to remember back a long time ago and what symptoms they had and when they started. So most of the time, if people have a touch point, they can say, oh, I started having pain when I was 10, or I started having pain when I was 4. But when you look even lower, where we have started hearing reports of children having symptoms, they're nonverbal. They probably are not going to remember what symptoms they had. And so we thought, well, let's start prospectively. Let's do a five-year study where we start with children who are diagnosed really early on in the first couple of years of life and follow them and see what their actual symptoms are at the time they're happening, which makes a big difference. As you might expect, we're near the end of my study, and that's five years of data on many, many children. Um, so what we've done here is just sliced and diced the data a little bit to make a really nice picture of when symptoms start to onset in this population. So we're looking at classic patients, both male and female, who have known classic mutations. And we're looking at their biomarkers and their first presenting symptom and what symptom it was. So it's a really simple process. It's, okay, when do these patients first start having pain? When do they first start having gastrointestinal issues? And what does it look like? And what do their biomarkers look like at that point? At this point, we're just doing urinary biomarkers. We're doing non-invasive biomarkers. So we look at it, lysoGB3 and stranded GB3 right there in the urine. We find that children who are pre-verbal are starting to show signs of gastrointestinal issues, and they follow a really specific pattern each time, starting with bloating, starting with um, increased flatulence, and then moves closely into abdominal pain, and then moves into diarrhea and abdominal pain, and then gets worse from there. So what we're really seeing is even though these first symptoms are so nonspecific, and you might say, well, everybody, ha every baby has bloating, we're really seeing this pattern of progression in these classic patients with Fabry disease that's starting more like 18 months or 24 months, or at the latest before they're three by just a few months. And that's a big change from when we usually said symptom onset's more like three years, now we're saying it's more like one or two. And these are patients that, unless you ask, they may not report on these nonspecific symptoms. They're just, you know, giving them mylocon drops or trying to change their diet or whatever needs to change. Um, but when you ask specifically and you ask at the time it's happening, I think you're getting stronger information about when symptoms are coming on. I think the first thing we have to do is establish when the children are having symptoms and the exact pattern of, in, of increase for pain, for gastrointestinal issues, and for some of the other symptoms we might see. It's important to note that we haven't seen any angiokeratomas in our population yet, even though that's one of those pathognomonic signs we expect to see, but they're not developing yet. And all the children, the oldest is seven now. Um, so I think the changes are going to come once we say there's earlier issues and then we look at, you know, when someone starts therapy that they continue to have some problems that maybe if we'd started therapy a little bit earlier they wouldn't have had. So if we've got a seven-year-old now and he's having pain and he started having pain when he was four, if we'd started therapy when he was four instead of seven, would he be having pain now? Which seems like a counterintuitive argument, but you're trying to figure out on average when the symptoms onset and does that correlate with when we need to start therapy or do we have a couple years leeway in which we don't have to treat yet and it still could be reversed.